Hello everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Lost in Translation Mon. This time we'll be covering Digimon Ghost Game Episode 56, Impurity. I'm May, and I'm joined by the enchanting Quinn. Hi. And the, of course, equally enchanting Chloe. Hello. So, of course, I'm still going through my list of lovely synonyms. Uh, it's going to be a fun day when I realise that I can't remember which ones I've already used and I just start reusing them. Ooh. But they all apply very much so. So, in any case, bit of housekeeping. So, next week is Christmas Day. So, it's Sunday on my time and in Japan. So, that's the that's Christmas Day for me. So, next week's recording will be recorded separately like we usually do our separate ones but it it should it should still be fun we have well we've done it a few times now so we're, we're pretty good at the uh the sep the old separate recording uh just because i'll be out during the day obviously because it's christmas day and then the following week so that's january 1st i believe in japan and australia there's no episode so there'll be no podcast for Which is good, cause next I'm traveling week and, and then wouldn't have been available anyway uh-huh yeah, and there is that. I was kind of all, like, I know because you did mention that a few weeks ago, and I was kind of like, I'm, I am expecting there not to be an episode because Japan yeah. do have like a public holiday on that day. So I was sense, expecting yeah. as much, but I'm really glad that they've, uh, yeah, Just that they've out. actually confirmed uh-huh. it because it's our first like, it's yeah, it's it's our first like, uh, no ghost game Sunday for like quite a while since I believe the hiatus. So that's nice. So we get to enjoy our holidays, and then the next episode we record together, unless anything comes up, would be January 8th, so the week after the first. So two weeks, uh, yes, no, yes, that wait, no. Right. Three weeks. Three three weeks. Three three weeks? Three weeks from today. Sorry, Kimbo Energy separate Day. separate next two week, weeks. no so... one after that, then the third week is we're back. Yep. Yep. Cool. Yes, thank thank you. That that's the the TLDR version of what I was trying to like communicate with my mouth, but the brain wasn't catching up to the mouth, uh, like which that. is a mm-hmm. frequent problem for me. Same. Well, yeah, same. which definitely is is a problem. I'll, I'll work on it one day. But in any case, that's basically all the housekeeping that we have. So normal again in in three weeks after this episode. So yes. So synopsis for this week. This week we had our usual characters who get picked on by the Mons of the Week being Hiro's friend and Kiyoshiro, and then eventually Ruli. And they basically do this horrifying thing where they're kind of washing their face or washing something else and saying, you know, impure or dirty, dirty. And it's kind of haunting. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I can't not and... think of the future on joke when you say that. Dirty, dirty. Yeah. Dirty, dirty. Yeah, I definitely got it too. Um, We are just a never-ending Neon Genesis Evangelion and Futurama reference podcast. Mm -hmm. As, you know, all of life should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as as it should be, which which is correct. So, and speaking of Evangelion, this episode, but we will get to that. Mm -hmm. So, Obligatory, every uh, masterpiece, Evangelion, has its cheap imitation, real life. Yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. Um... I, I'm still waiting for an angel to pop up in the sky and I have to, like, throw a giant fork through it. That That's the day I'm waiting for. What Was that the 12th? No. Today was the 12th that angel. Was what was, that was, like, the, the 11th? 17th, I think. I could yeah. look it up if you don't mind a bunch was... of clacking sounds on the recording. Uh, let, let's, let's, let's just say it's the one in the sky. We all know what we're talking we, about. We we're, all we're all know the one with the giant fork. We all know the one with the giant fork. We use the giant fork quite a lot in Evangelion. They really like it. There's some symbolism there, I'm sure, and there is. But in any case, uh, so we have really investigating the Mon of the Week. We also have Hero investigating the Mon of the Week. It's interesting that they're kind of doing it separately because Hero notices Kiyoshiro is acting weird because he called him and then started being weird about cleaning and then got hurt, like jumped by a bunch of people in the dorm being weird and then Ruli's friends were also being weird so they were kind of investigating separately which I actually liked that it was something different that we haven't had Mm -hmm. so then they have they do their both their digital phase shift thing to the digital field and we find out that the mon of the week is the 12th angel from Evangelion Uh so it's actually the purple version of Sukuyamon so Kazuomon and she's in her maid form. And then we have the characters basically have really getting captured and it's only Hero that has to save the day. And Goromon and Jellymon have to fight off these wooden dolls that have been basically replacing all the humans. 
So Hero then himself gets captured, and I was about to think that they were going to say, you have no impurities because you've never done anything wrong. Yeah, like, we I thought they were going to do, like... Yeah, we definitely thought that was going to happen. Yep. Yeah, and it, was, it would have been kind of funny, like, oh, he's so, like, plain. He just, he's already, like, a wooden, uh, yeah, a no. wooden doll sort of thing. I definitely expected them to do the whole, you know, Hero's such a pushover, he can't say no to anyone, that he's never broken a promise or something. Yeah, which is I something we've done before. So I'm gl- him to have more impurities. Oh yeah, that was that was surprising, and I kind of liked it because Same. it was very it, it was realistic. Like the whole episode was realistic. There seems to be some form of metaphor of them, you know, stripping away all these impurities, and you're left with just a wooden, boring doll. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's and, kind and that's of heavy-handed what, even. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a heavy it's a heavy handed metaphor that I don't I don't I don't think all kids are gonna really catch on in the metaphor, but yeah. it's definitely a lot it, it's it's deep for what mm-hmm. I'm yeah, expecting from Digimon. It's my favorite basically. part of the episode, to be honest. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, mine too. And uh, yeah, so Hero gets captured, and yes, he has a higher impurity count mm-hmm. than Ruli, which I was surprised by. But they're all just minor impurities, like. Oh, when you were six years old, you didn't return a library book on time. They're sort of, like, minor things, like, um, you dropped trash once, you didn't pick it up. Like, even though it was by mistake, it's still something that, they're all reasonable things that you would have done throughout your life that aren't fantastic, but, like, not really that bad. Mm -hmm. Like, kind of, like, grey area, they're sort of neutral things. And then we have, since Hero was captured... Kazuomon saying how humans are so impure and, he's, and she wants to, like, set ablaze them, so that means burn the wooden dolls alive. That's horrifying. And As they start their Gamamon own pyre. Says that, mm-hmm. Yeah, which, again, similar to uh. last week, how we had them dig their own graves, or mm-hmm. the, the good cats, cat-human pets, uh, dig the graves of the ones who failed. Yep. Uh, just yeah. incredibly morbid. Uh, n- not what I was expecting from, you know, my Sunday morning cartoon of the Digimons, but uh, go off, I guess. I- I'm-, I'm a fan of that. So while we have Gamamon kind of like, instead of freaking out, and we have this kind of effect of like the heart rate monitor that we get from the vital brace that kind of show up on the screen when Hero is getting like the impurity taken out of him, Gamamon, instead of freaking out, realizes that impurities are kind of making us who we are, and that humans aren't impure, they're, they're his friends, and he's done a lot with all his friends, and he's made lots of friends. It's not just Hero, it's it's everyone. So he then evolves to his mega form, Cirrusmon, who has gun arms, and is so much cooler than I thought. He has gun blade arms. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which is perfect, because he has, like, he... It almost seems like he's the combination of all the adult forms, because we have, like, the, yeah, the yeah. gun blade horns of Wes and Gamamon. He flies like Kyle's Gamamon. He's got firepower, like, uh, Battle Gamamon. He's got white on him, like Canon Weissmon. This feels like a really good uh, design for him. And, uh, yeah, so I guess we'll get to that later. And then he fights Kazuamon, who eventually concedes and says, Hey, look, since you got the <laughs> form, I'm kind of... <laughs> Bless you. Uh, oh. she, 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 she sneezes and she then says bless you because mm-hmm. that that's pure. You have to say bless you if... I'm sure that that's actually an example of one thing that she would count as an impurity. <sighs> Somebody sneezes and you don't you just don't say anything. Mm-hmm. That that's an impurity. So Qu- Quinn's got one impurity point more. I don't because I said bless you. Take that, I'm Quinn. supposed to say it when I sneeze? No, I was going to say, if anything, I have two Wait, impurity I, points now because oh, sorry, I didn't oh, say oh, sorry, I thought Wow, I th- how okay. dare you accuse okay, me of I, sinning? I... I, I I I thought that mm-hmm. I thought okay my mistake okay Quinn you're fine because I thought that Chloe <laughs> sneezed actually that that's one impurity point for me because I got I thought that Chloe sneezed was Quinn's but no how so, dare you yeah. in fact yeah <laughs> so 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 that's an impurity point to me uh, and yes but that's things that that would be an example of sort of like a thing that she would count so kind of like these small things anyway so Kazumon kind of just leaves. And I'm kind of glad that she says, like, you know, she'll be back and she's just going to admit that she was wrong in this case because Gammon got to evolve, which is kind of like the sign of you're, you're good. Which is kind of she cute. Said, I kind of like that. And then my strongest attack, so I'll leave. Yeah, and, and, and that too. But I, I got the impression it was because, like, 
They were only he able to stand able up to, to the both. strongest attack because their friendship was so pure, you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Whereas, yeah. You know, that, that's the impression that I got. If she'd just strong without the speech, she probably still would have left. Yeah, yeah, that that is true. And then <laughs> we have a moment that yeah. is the fun... We, we have, like, the funniest moment, which definitely is not meant to be funny in the slightest, but Jellymon says, wow, it sure is nice that she was able to erase everyone's <laughs> memories. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which just made me because I'm I'm glad they said it. I'm really I'm actually glad they said it because it's kind of like Same. like remember the time we all had like weed coming out of our phones yep. and yep. just multiplying and that was really weird. Uh, no, like we didn't mention anything there. I'm just assuming that everyone remembers that time. This time, at least, we're saying that okay. But I love no, no by, one by implication, everyone does remember the time that you know people started turning to plants. Yeah. There's some horrifying things that have happened, and they haven't said, oh, we erased their memories. I think they've only said it a few times, and they said it this episode, and it was funny when they did. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, and then the episode ends with, uh, with us just wiping everyone's memories, and I'm happy about this. Now that we're done with our synopsis, let's discuss our discussions. So what were our highlights this week? I had so many highlights, and I could sum all of them up by saying this episode was really Ava, but for purposes of not having a 15-minute podcast, we can list them out. Um, (laughs) There are a few non-Ava ones. There are a few non-Ava ones. The first one he wrote down is that bad things were happening to the creep friend in, like, the first five seconds of the episode, so that's always nice. Mm Mm-hmm. See, um, what, I, what I'm happy about is that he was in this episode, but he wasn't being a creep friend. He just kind of was having yeah, a bad time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bad and I kind of prefer him. him in this way. Like, like he didn't do anything gross this week. Yeah, so and I like it better him, when like, he is just being possessed from minute one so that he can't do gross things. Yeah, he just, he paid yeah, a little karma and that was it. Mm-hmm. Like, I like him a lot better when he's just being the caught-up man. Yeah. Which is effectively what he is in most of the episodes. It's happening to him, or if they want to make it closer to the group, it's Kiyoshiro. Mm-hmm. Yep. This week it was both. It's, oh, okay. Yeah. And sometimes which it's Ruli's really friends. Good. I mean, it, oh, yeah, Ruli's friends do also get it, but I feel like out of everyone to be the target of the Monster of the Week, it's most commonly Kota. Yeah. But it has also been Kyoshiro, depending on, yeah, again, how mm-hmm. if they want it to be like more hero-focused, they go with Kota because he's the friend. And if they want to, it to be more like focused on the group in general, it's Kyoshiro. Mm-hmm. Um, my next highlight was that, yeah, this episode just in general was pretty intense. Like, we had a dude trying to drown someone else in a sink in the intro. Mm-hmm. It was... That yeah, was that was like... Yeah. That was surprising. Um, the little, like, I don't even know what to call them, but, like, the, the almost, like, little fractal patterns that would pop up when someone was about to start getting all filthy, filthy or whatever, uh, reminded me a lot of Madoka, which was nice, uh, and then there was just... I haven't seen that. ...so much that reminded me of Ava, um... Oh, yeah, we definitely did do Ava, again, we, we do Ava quite a bit. Yeah. Really just got 12th angel like, like Shinji, got sucked into the, uh what, Dirac C or whatever, um, yeah. is pretty great. I also like that they had it just spit Angoramon back out. That was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, even then when they were in the 12th Angel, it made, like, dolphin noises and stuff. Yep. Um, oh, and the chanting was really ominous. Uh, I really mm-hmm, loved mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the visuals were good. The sound design was great. Yeah. Uh, oh, the actually, animation was it... so... Like, the shadows. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And to take it back a little bit in the story, uh, when... Uh, what's her bucket, whose name I forget, who has the hair in the ponytail with the cute scrunchie, was just like, hey, everyone, there's some uh, filthy, impure people trying to enter our school. Like, that was that was pretty creepy. I liked it a lot. That was creepy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was really, just really Just the, the nonchalant like, way that... she was like, minasan. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, the whole episode just felt like... I, 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 mean, I feel like most ep- episodes of Ghost Game are just maybe a writer saying a nightmare that they had once and they go through here uh, just just from there. And I honestly just feel like this is someone's nightmare of just all these people that they know acting really off-colour, doing weird things, kind of being possessed. It just feels like, yeah, each episode is just a writer either saying a kink they have or a nightmare they had. And sometimes both, both. <laughs> yeah. It, and I think this was a yeah. both. A little bit of both, did. Oh, yeah. Well, when we do the giant ladies, it's always like, oh, giant okay, women. we're doing yeah. giant ladies this week. Yep. 
the giant lady crushing like how, uh, Ruli between her fingers. Oh, that was another thing. Pulling Ruli's like soul yeah. out from oh, the side sad. shot. That was really oh, I hated good. That. Yeah. I hated that. Like, I mean, I, I, when I say I, okay, when I say I hated that, I don't mean that I actually hated it, like or disliked it. Yeah, yeah. It means that like uh, it was it like, like, resonated like, with me. Yeah, we went we went through this last week about how I'm feeling, how I'm meant to feel. Uh, like when I don't like a character because I'm meant to not like the character. Uh-huh. I really like I mean, this episode in general had me go, "Oh, that's that's creepy." A few times, which is good. Like I've I've had nightmares where I'm with my friends and they start acting weird and they're you know just a little bit off, and it's it is it is haunting. And this episode did that, and it's just yep, yeah, yeah, creepy. Mm-hmm. This Ava was uh, pff, this Ava. This Ava was really episode, though. This Ava. Yeah. No. Uh, um, <laughs> this, this Ava was episode, yeah. It was. Uh, like, uh, Canon Weissman was just uh, Deputy Commander for Yutsky, saying, you know, I prefer a world filled with life, even though it might be sinful, or whatever his specific quote is. Um, the, the 2D-ish mm. silhouettes in the nether dimension are just the, you know, souls during instrumentality. They even look like the same kind of paper doll-looking oh, yeah. thing. Uh, we even did the Ava water droplet. Uh, Serious mom. Yeah, Kazuamon used her AT field to slam Cannon Weissman into the ground. Classic 14th Angel move. Um, Serious Mon is just a mass produced Ava, but less creepy. He has a prog knife. It was a <laughs> lot of Ava, and I'm a simple gal who sees Ava and Neuron activates, and I like. Yeah, I mean, this episode was exceedingly like as soon as I saw the ball, I was just like, it's uh, like it's I even it. sent it to uh, to Chloe yep. and Quinn in, in the Discord <laughs> channel. I was just like, hey Chloe, and I posted two pictures <laughs> of the orb yep. thing, mm-hmm. and I was like, I didn't even have to say, hey look, it's the twelfth angel. Nope. Chloe was already on the board of like oh, yeah. like ninety percent of my highlights are how Ava this episode is straight up. And then well, no, said, so the first thing I, I said was the good. yeah, I, yeah. I initially said. Uh, 90% of my highlights are about how good this episode is, <laughs> but then I realized, oops, I meant to say Ava, yeah. but those words are just synonymous in my brain, apparently, so. Oh, absolutely, oh, and incredible. I kind of, I kind of love how I, like, I didn't even have to say, like, there was no prompting nope. of, like, this is Evangelion, I, I didn't even say, oh, this is 12th Angel, didn't even mention Ava at all. It was just very clear, but no context needed. It was just incredible, like, I mean, when you, when, when someone says, hey, Chloe, usually that just means it's he Ava. is an Evangelion reference. Mm-hmm. Like, in, in the best way possible. Like, I kind of love that, how I can see something and I'll be like, I bet Chloe's going to say something Evangelion related. Mm-hmm. And it just, it makes me happy. There's all, I don't think there's ever been a point where I have said, hey, it, like, look at this Ava. And you'll be like, oh, you're right, that, that is Ava. Like, you like you didn't nah. realize. Oh, you always realize the Ava. The Ava Chloe seer. sees Ava whether it's there or not. Mm-hmm. Also, I have to yes, apologize like for earlier. Yeah. Uh, we don't throw forks at the seventeenth angel. We throw forks at the fifteenth angel. Okay, I'm glad. I'm glad we found that. Out. We, mm-hmm. Well, we threw forks at a lot of things in Evangelion. Over time, although I think in the original series, just just the first, the the one thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, Lilith has a, the giant fork. Yeah, and but we don't throw it at her. It's just and then throw it you know, at the stuck end. in her. Yeah. It, oh, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of implanted there. Yeah, you okay, you're right. We just Yeah, we, we pull we, it we pull, out of Lilith and is throw it at Ariel, the... and then it stays up by the moon, and then we make a bunch of copies of it. It's there's, there's, yeah. it's complicated at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it is there a word that means to like to fork something, to like put a fork in? Impale would be probably the best. Yeah, impale. I, can I think guess, of. but Skewer. I think like skewer. I don't know. I feel like skewer. Yeah, that that's good. I think skewer is a good. But if I poke something with a fork. I, I would always say I'm forking it, but that's not actually a. That, I don't that think that's is a not word. typically a word unless you're you could doing say some like good stuff. Spearing. Spearing. Yeah, I think skewer is still probably the one I'd go with. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so skewer works puncture, with, with perhaps. the sp- sp- puncture. Yes, okay. Like, see, in Australia we have an ad for selling pork, and it's like get some pork on your fork. And it's just, <laughs> I, don't know, right, it, I don't know why. It get some pork on your fork, baby. Yeah, get get some pork on your fork. And it's, it's no, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm like starting to wonder if Australia is actually a real place or <laughs> if I'm just part of this Look, ongoing Australia's joke to the rest like of the France. world. Y'all don't really exist. Mm-hmm. We don't. It's a, like the, the the pen licenses and Healthy Harold. Like well, we're not a, we're not real. Um. Anyway, so do we have any other highlights? 
Uh, yes. Um, we kind of touched on it earlier, but I had written it down before you even mentioned it, so I'm going to say it again because it's also neat to just see how on the same page we were about this, but I definitely thought that we were going to get a, uh, you know, oh, the reason that Hero is the only one who's okay is because he's such a pushover, he can never say no to people, so he's never broken a promise. So I was glad to see mm. that not only was I wrong, but he has even more than Ruli did. That was pretty cool. <laughs> Which is so great. Mm -hmm. Like it's we've already we've already had the oh hero can't be targeted by this mon of the week because he's, he's just kind such of a perfect. good boy. Yeah, I do wish that yeah, and hero would need to be rescued more often. He got rescued by mm. uh, serious mon this episode. Or whatever. Yeah, but you know what I mean. Why yeah, can't, I why agree, can't though, Ruby yeah. save the day? <laughs> because her name isn't like literally has, hero but... of the show. <laughs> Because she's a girl. But at mm -hmm. least, you know it to be true. at least yeah. this week was a 100% hero episode. Like, Ruli did try to help. Yep. But she kind of got captured. But we kind of needed that. And also, mm -hmm. I'm fine with Hero having an episode when it's his evolution episode. That's fair. By the way, if you hear a rooster in the background, I'm as annoyed as Yala. It crows from like 5 a.m. to like 7 p.m. and mm. it's been consistent for several weeks. So if a rooster is heard in the background. Uh, I can't same. Say that I have, um, but now I kind of hope I do. It's just it's <laughs> it's very loud, uh, but I'm not sure if it's going to be picked up on the microphone. Yeah. Uh, but it is loud enough that it will wake me up in the morning, which is you know <laughs> That's uh, it's job. What they do. But, yeah, that is uh, what they were known for. But it does do it like more than twelve hours per day, which is not what a rooster should do. Like I'm fine no, with hearing no. a rooster in the morning. Mm -hmm. Also, we're in, we're not in the country or anything. We're in the suburbs, like with huh. a fairly built-up area. Yeah, well, who yeah. who? It's getting to be a more common I, thing. That, okay, that needs to be urban farming crap. Yeah, yeah, but I, I the, the rooster is is it's, I don't think it's happy. I don't think it's normal for a rooster. No, to be I, going I, on. So I've heard of chickens. I don't think a rooster is a good idea. No, it's it is crowing and it's just that, yeah, yep. it just did it just then. So I caught a little bit of it there. It? Yeah. Which means cool. that, um, that your was... recording almost certainly caught it because Zoom's probably doing a lot of filtering so that we don't hear it. Oh yeah, it it is. There's a lot of rooster and it's just I. So we have our windows open a lot, um, but our neighbors don't. And I tried to like tell my neighbor about it, and I think she thought I was absolutely insane because <laughs> uh, I was like, "There's this rooster, and it's all day." And she was like, "Sure." <laughs> like, <laughs> No, I'm 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 not going insane. It's definitely there. Uh, it's it's yeah, it, mm -hmm. yeah. It's anyway. So uh, yeah, I do I'm, have one last highlight. It's driving me. Whenever we're ready. Oh, yep, go on. Uh, yep, and go it's on. another one that we did both already say, but I honestly appreciate that. You know, at least for once, we're acknowledging the fact that nobody's going to remember that n remember this next week, <laughs> and we're giving, uh, admittedly, kind of a hand wavy reason for it. But you know, at least a reason rather than just, oh yeah, um, remember that time when uh, there were just zombies? No, yes, you don't. Mm, oh, me either. She I guess. Sure is the most powerful single being we've encountered who could just take over the world more or less mm -hmm. again twice two weeks I'd in a row it. yeah all she had to do was not attack that town mm -hmm. but apparently she was yeah, sent I like by how they're... someone so that's interesting yeah i got a little little hint yeah. of plot as a treat and interestingly or maybe only interesting to me because i'm a huge dork but so kazuamon is the dark version of sakuyamon who is renamon's megaform mm-hmm mm. Which is interesting because every time we have a Ghoulis Gammon episode, we've had a dark version of a Digimon kind of watching. Like, we've got uh, yeah. Dark Gilmon, Dark Gargomon, Dark Algumon, two of which are the Digimon from Tamers. And now we've got a third Dark Digimon who actually made herself known as the Mon of the Week, and that's uh, Kazumon. And we've also, it's not the first time we've had a Renamon evolution uh, be in the episode. We've had the uh, Dark Cubimon very early on in the show. We've had mm -hmm. Dark Talmon in the um, Possession of Hero episode. So it is interesting that if, we, if that was a little line of plot, it may have something to do with these dark Digimon who are just hanging out, watching, being kind of Yeah, they definitely kind seem to be associated with heroes, definitely not dead dad. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I can only who, assume I is the, the, the one they're talking about when is... they say the, the one who sent us or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I think he'll be symbolically dead and unable to return to the human world or something. But... I maintain that Hokuto is the one playing the ghost game. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I'm going to be really sad if this is all just a simulation that, that he's just playing. And that then no, no one's real. I mean, that the whole universe is just a simulation. why Hero's mom doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. No, she's Which is in sad. South America. Mm-hmm. Sure. She's doing business. Yes. Yeah. Exactly one person has ever claimed to have known her, and she was lying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she was a Spoda, and we don't trust Spodas. It's true. Uh, Especially I, not I do have a, a highlight. So, so my first highlight was just the animation was just A+. Plus. The, the use oh, of yeah. shadows was just it great. Was really it was good. ominous. It it felt even better than previous episodes where I've said that the animation was spectacular. This episode just really kind of they just nailed it. Mm-hmm. just turned it up to like if previous episodes have turned it up to eleven, this one turned it up to like at least fifteen. Mm. It definitely it definitely broke the scale. We went past eleven. We we tipped it past ten to eleven, and then we just we tore the little knobby thing off. Whatever that's, I think it's just called a knob. Uh, we just turned that knob off. That that sounds weird. I'm going to stop talking now. Um, no, but my other highlight, which is something I mentioned in the synopsis overview, but the fact that there's a metaphor for if you remove the impurities, people are just kind of boring wooden dolls and humans need to kind of have the flaws mm-hmm. to be themselves. I kind of loved that. Oh, yeah. It's such a good, like, mm-hmm. it's it's a message to say, like, okay, don't don't be an awful person, but you don't really have to, like, beat up yourself if you're not, like, Catholic perfect. guilt is bad. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. Like you, like not everything you do is a sin. If you do something like minor and it, you know it's not really evil or anything, like it's it's not going to be a problem your whole life. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to do a perfect job of anything. You just really have to do your best. And everyone's best is different, and that makes us different. And that was the whole kind of moral of this episode, which, again, it, it's a nice message to show kids. It's a nice message to show adults. It's just a nice message, and they kind of do hammer it in. But I mm. still feel like it's subtle enough that I don't think that all people could pick I'm saying, like, uh, no, there's no issue if you don't pick up on it. who won't pick it up and go, wow, that was heavy-handed, yeah. you know. Yeah, which is again at the end of the day, this this is a kids show, yeah, so but it didn't I don't to mind feel if the metaphors are kind especially. of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't feel like I felt like it was it was decent enough. Like I I I really liked that. I liked that there seemed to be a kind of like a lesson in this episode, and I just like Digimon we, so we much. Know, know. I've noticed this about you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, not, not that I've tried to hide the the fact that I enjoy Digimon, that I am a Digimon enjoyer, but this episode, like, chef, chef's kiss. It was pretty solid uh, But yeah, do we have any other... Yeah, it was a solid episode. Do we have any other highlights? I'm ready to move on. Yeah, I think okay, we um, hit all of ours. Okay, I don't have ours. any lowlights. We oh, had a hand so one last highlight. highlight. Oh, good. Go off. I, I was I was pretty into the everyone carrying torches made of mops and crap. That was, that was pretty good. Okay. Fair that enough. was it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, we did have a few lowlights, um, but most of them are pretty minor. Um, I thought Sirius Mon looked kind of doofy. Um, I don't really like the face, but, like, it wasn't terrible. Eh, So, yeah, you know. Um, I was also kind of hoping that we'd get, like, a dark super Evo rather than the mega Evo this episode. Um, So that's that's a minor lowlight. Um the the main and like again none of these well i guess our last one is kind of a yeah. semi large low light but it, the next one is like angoramon's aphorisms are always weird but this episode in particular was just really weird yeah like mixing hey mixing crimson makes a new red if you've already eaten the poison lick the plate what what does that even mean also that's terrible yeah, advice angus. yeah <laughs> I think I think Angoramon just like had something before saying that. I guess, like, yeah. Like, did he take some Finergan by any chance? Angoramon, how are your allergies, my sweetheart? Some what? Like, oh, Finergan is a and like it's an antihistamine, but you also use a, <laughs> no. <laughs> thank you, and you have no impurities. Um, no, but they have. Uh, 
A uh, call back to the start this yeah, earlier in the episode. Yeah. Hey. Uh, no, but uh, phenergan is like an antihistamine, but you also take it um, as an anti nausea. It's an anti motion sickness, um, but it makes you feel like you're on a different planet. Uh, I hate it so much, but it it works so well for my allergies, and my allergies have been really pretty bad lately. Uh, so if I ever want to go go and have like a, a just. As when I say forgettable night, I just mean I'm just on like I'm not there. That's fair. So um, that's a, like he's he, like I would say things like what Angoramon said, like you've been hitting the 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 Fenergan, haven't you, uh, Angoramon? <laughs> uh, it's a it's a, it's 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 a good antihistamine, but it your brain does not catch up. Maybe that's why I'm that maybe that's why I can no longer speak English. Maybe because uh, of the the antihistamines. But anyway, uh. I, yeah, as I said, I don't have any low lights. What are any other low lights y'all have? We have one last one. Do you want to take yeah, this one, Quinn? Yeah, so I guess this is is less about this episode, more about just you know the series as a whole. But every character who isn't hero, Gammon, or a baddie being replaced by wooden puppets is pretty emblematic of the series as a whole. Mm. Yeah, I, I get what you mean. Mm-hmm. And like you know, it 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 fit the the plot of the episode, but it was also just kind of a little like. That is what happens in on the, the nose. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Y'all might be hearing Yumi uh, going crazy. Yep, on yep. our side of the recording. Yep, she got the <laughs> zoomies. All, no, all I can hear is this, I, all I can hear is the the rooster. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, those were like, our four I, low I just, lights. I want I want Yumi and the rooster to go off and have adventures where they're just being <laughs> oh, in the Yumi middle of podcast it. recordings. Yeah, that they'd be the yeah, wait. You, Yumi the would kill the rooster, Especially or the rooster would kill Yumi. They'd certainly both attempt. Oh, they'd be... Yeah, Yumi doesn't oh, no, I want know them to be best... fear is the thing. <laughs> she really doesn't. No, no that's a I lie. Want She's the most I... high strung cat I've ever that's met. She true. flees constantly. Never mind. No, y'all. W- no, what I want is I want Yumi to be like riding the rooster on his back, like it's a steed into battle. Oh god! I th- that that's the kind of dynamic I want from this Yumi rooster double feature. <laughs> She'd become too powerful. Yumi and the rooster. It's the next Pixar movie. The cops can't stop. Her. Gosh, that sounds so good. <laughs> it like does. why? Is, why is that? Like someone from Pixar is going to listen to this and go, hmm, talking animals. I'm just saying. Like anywho. Anywho, uh, favorite character? Mine was actually just Gammon. I I liked his little like um, humans are impure, and that's why I like them. Yeah. Like, I just I, I like Gammon. I like how he really just he also calls his friends his champion today. I like that. I like when he calls things that aren't chocolate champion, which means that as much as he likes chocolate, he likes he also loves his humans. <laughs> Did he? And it's not I just didn't... it's. Remember that happening, but I'll take it. Because I know he complained about the chocolate when they were putting his chocolate on the big old thing to be lit on fire. Well, they def- he definitely said that they were psycho, like the humans. Mm. Okay, I just missed that then. Uh, and Unless I'm just imagining things, right. but I liked that. So Gammon is my yeah. favorite character. Right. Uh, Chloe, favorite character? Uh, Kazuamon, all the way. Um, giant woman who does Ava things. I couldn't have asked for more. Yeah, honestly, I, I was expecting you to pick her. Yeah, I, I'm not surprised. Which is, is, is oh, well, I was either going to say, okay, if Chloe likes this episode, it's going to be Kazuamon. If she doesn't, it's going to be the 12th angel. Uh, and then that's what I kind of had in my mind. <laughs> or actually, you know me even too if well. you like the episode. <laughs> yeah. Still might have been. That's another. And uh, Quinn? I, it took me a while, because I wanted to, you know, mix it up a little bit, but I, I think I am just going with Kazuamon as well. Just a really good totally baddie yeah. who at least appears to have had a reason to wander off as soon as mm-hmm. Gamamon got strong enough. Yeah, because of the purity yeah. of friendship. And was, I was thinking because of she was, orders from the mysterious somebody who's definitely not yeah. the dad, who just yeah. keeps who's sending definitely people not the dad. you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she also wiped everyone's mind, which again, yeah, I I find that funny. Huh. She sure can do that anytime she feels like it, huh? Yeah, I I I just like how Jellymon was like, well, that was really nice of her for removing everyone's memories. Like, wow, Jellymon, it was the funniest moment that I, didn't, it was really it good. didn't have any I, reason to be funny. Uh, it's never going to be, but God, I hope that that's foreshadowing of. Oh yeah, no, Hero's dad's just been gaslighting people and using Kazuamon to change memories. <laughs> Honestly, I'm I'm on. Okay, I know I said this for Adventure Colin about how like the big bad was definitely definitely Mimi's grandfather, and I then it wasn't. Should have been, but like it it was like when they did the Farga thing, and they were saying, "Oh, technology in the human world is really the big bad." 
I was kind of like, oh my gosh, they're going to do it. They're going to... And then it went no... Like, it just... I feel like it could have done... Yeah. It, it could have gone so well. It, and maybe COVID hurt uh, Adventure Colin, but it would have been great if I they just had something having, that like, was like, he is a bit... A storyline sketched out in advance toward Adventure Colin. Yeah, that too. And also they referenced Izzy's parents' uh, situation and then never did anything with it sure after, didn't. like, episode... 12 yeah, or something. He, he implied so, any, that it was an anyway. awkward question once. Anywho, this mm-hmm. is not yeah. an Adventure Colon podcast anymore. Fortunately. Yeah, this is, mm-hmm. yeah we Thank already God. did that. <laughs> we did our suffering back then. Mm-hmm. Now is not the time for suffering. So, Chloe, what are you rating this week's episode out of five? Uh, as probably surprising nobody at all. I'm giving this a five out of five. There was a lot Honestly, of Ava. same. Yeah, I, I also gave it a five. Uh, Quinn? I think I might also go with a five. It was a pretty strong episode. Yeah. I'm trying to find if we've... Have we ever given full... I'm pretty yes. sure we... Yeah, okay. So we gave episode 20 and 21 fives. Uh, thir- uh, episode 13 also got fives. Uh, so that's going to be kind of like... Uh, Didn't Jellymon's introduction uh, episode we all give fives too yeah, as well? No, yeah, Jellymon's... In- uh, yeah, so Jellymon's introduction episode, episode 20, I think. Episode... What, what about episode 36? Okay, we have actually given a lot of, like, fives across the board. Yeah, it's been so a we just kind series. of have to work out. Uh, yeah, it actually has. I uh, the Okay, the only... Okay, so in... S- we have to pick if it's first, second, third, fourth, fifth, or sixth place. And th- that's a hard one, because... Th- so the episodes in uh, Who Already Have Full Marks, episode 13, Executioner, which is the uh, first Ghoulis Gammon episode, episode 21, The Spider's Lure... Hot Spider Mummy. Uh, episode 37, Herd of the Dead? What was... That was when they were real zombies. One? I can't even remember what that one was. Oh, yeah, the Are Real Zombies episode. Mm-hmm. Horrifying. Episode 50, Divine Anger, which was Jellymon's introduction episode. Uh, episode 20, so The Prison of Fire. We just burnt someone alive for funsies. Mm-hmm. And episode 36, Labyrinth of Grit. Was that the... That was, was when we did the Grit, Descent. The... Oh, okay. Is it? I'm pretty sure. Okay, I thought it was... I was going to say, is that the... I might have to go through... Like, m- maybe you're right. Take a look, but I, I'm pretty sure I do remember sure liking the Descent it's episode. the Descent episode. I remember not remembering what that is. Yeah, so what did I say? That episode... Uh, let's see... Um, yeah, that was the Descent. You're right. So <laughs> we have to find choose how much we liked this week's episode. Um, spoiler alert, I put mine in first place. Hey, so me too. So my vote is obviously for first place. Okay, you too. And Quinn? Uh... I don't have an objection to putting it in first, I guess. It was pretty strong. So and... is it in is it in everyone's first place? Um, I haven't decided on my personal overall, but I'm fine with doing that as the 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 group first place. Okie dokie. It's uh it's in first place. We've finally dethroned episode 13 Executioner, mm-hmm. which was so long ago. Yep. That was what January. So it's been almost a year of that being in first place, mm. and I'm so happy because I was starting to Wonder if we were going to have another, like, uh, episode at one episode yeah. four. Yeah. It was 42 yeah. episodes ago. Like, yeah, that, that was, yeah, a lot ago. So, Sorry, uh, so yeah, mine's 43. first place. Chloe, you said first place. First place for me as well, yep. Yep. And uh, someone just tweeted at me, when did Ghost Game become <laughs> Evangelion? <It's> always, <laughs> so, like, I mean, I'm it's we're always just been objectively there. correct that this is the most Ava episode of Ghost Game to date. Yeah, it's very, very Ava. Um, there's still, there's still the one. Was I think it was like when Teropiamon are flying in a circle in the sky, and it's definitely the Ava series. That's pretty Ava, it's been but completed. It, it's pretty. That was a a very Ava moment, but this was a very Ava episode. You know, yeah. Like yeah. there, there was it's, there were some yeah. Ava moments in that episode, but it was not an Ava episode. This was an Ava. There was a episode. giant Sephiroth in the sky. Followed by an orange orb. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or not orange, a uh, glowy orb in the sky. It, yeah. yeah. I would, like, I would like to apologize to the five people who have not seen Evangelion, <laughs> who are just seeing there going, what are they talking about? If Honestly, you like this episode, like, you should watch I'm Evangelion. Sure to, that is true. Yeah, because, I mean, I am always hesitant to recommend Evangelion because I showed it to Brady, and Brady, like, like, I had to explain so much, and Brady was like, either, yeah, I know, or two, that's stupid. <laughs> like, see, this imp- this implies that that's actually his mum. And he's like, who? 
I How? think you have to let someone like, just okay. watch it and then do that on a second run through. Yeah, yeah. Let them watch it. Let them be confused, and then like a year later revisit it and have them point be like, out all oh. the things. Yeah, yeah. See, he after we watched End of Evangelion, he was just like, "I'm never letting you choose a movie ever again." <laughs> oh, Brady, like, you have oh. crossed me. I'm sorry. I'll be honest. I don't think it's like, the best movie I've ever seen, but... Quinn, you have crossed me. I'm sorry. <laughs> See, okay, w- when I first watched Evangelion, I actually preferred the the ending of Episodes just, like, them going into the 26. angelic days. Yeah, yeah oh, just, just because I really, really found it funny that, like, Ray without all, like... That like Oscar was still Asuka. She was still not like she was still herself. Like we even without the trauma, still less traumatized, traumatized, <laughs> traumatized. But but also Ray traumatized. without like mm-hmm. also traumatized. Like that's like yassified, but the Evangelion version. But Ray was just kind of like just the complete opposite, and I was yep. very much there for that as a kid. I was just like I love this. I I even bought the Angelic Days manga. I was I I love I loved it so much. Oh, I and I, I was actually kind of like. I keep meaning to read Angelic Days, but it always did seem like the the Ava spinoff I would want to engage with most. Uh, that being said, that did remind me, uh, a belated highlight of mine was the moments where we had the weird color changes were, was very oh, episode yeah. 25, 26. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, there, there, there we are. More, yeah, More Ava, absolutely. of course. It was okay yeah, I was, for I was thinking that... Yeah. It was... You were not protagonist. The only uh, anyway, thing that could have made Queen, it better is if Angoramon a... had just said congratulations at the end. <laughs> oh, I would have just, like, oh, probably... I, I would have broken my computer just uh, yeah. standing up I am in triumph. I am going like, with uh, uh, You know what? I'll, I, I went back and forth on first and second, but we'll we'll just make it a, a top first place. All right. Cool. So, Bad Friend has been dethroned, finally. So... We have all dethroned our previous first place, with Chloe's being episode 43, Red Eye, which I'm just thinking about that episode now is making my skin crawl. Mm-hmm. What a what an episode. And Quinn has dethroned episode 30, Bad Friend. So first across the board makes that very easy for overall, which, yeah, again, mm-hmm. is in first place. Do we have any miscellaneous thoughts that perhaps may or may not be Evangelion related uh, before we uh, move on to the next. I do have a miscellaneous thought, and you might be surprised to hear that it's not Evangelion related. Uh, my miscellaneous <laughs> thought is that I regret to inform all y'all who were saying that Bastemon wasn't horny last episode, that uh, just because she was less horny than she was in Cross Wars doesn't mean she wasn't horny. It was pretty horny. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that it wasn't, like, over-the-top horny. Yeah. Like, that wasn't, like, the whole thing. Like, it wasn't uh, just, it like, sexy cat lady. It didn't quite make me uncomfortable, but it, it sure was a lot. And... Yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely willing to grant that, yeah, it was probably tamer than it was in Cross Wars, but, like, to say that it was not horny just seems like willful ignorance to me. Like, Cross Wars, to me, is a weird season because it definitely felt like it had a, a younger demographic, but it had, like, the most horny scenes mm-hmm. like it had Lilithmon who again I'm not really like saying oh we can't like sexualize Lilithmon we like Lilithmon's whole thing is that she is to be sexualized because she is the deadly sin of lust so it makes sense for her to like kind of be like juggling her breasts like <laughs> oh no j- juggles <laughs> like she is God. juggling them that there is a if you search Lilithmon in the gift keyboard that's something that, that is the oh, first thing that comes no. up and it's obviously cut in the English version <laughs> but Cross Wars is such a weird thing because yes it has a younger demographic and i feel like a few people in the discord server even said cross wars does have a younger demographic but it has these consistently like sexual like uh, moments. digimon just kind of does that mm-hmm. that always has and yeah. it's really weird see i like when we do like hot men as like i feel like we, we can do a hot women but i also like when we do a hot men like mm-hmm. the vamdemon episode was just like yes or, vampires or are hot jury chasing after leomon oh yeah like ev- everyone can Captain be thirsty of them. Petermon and Hookmon. Yep. Oh yes, that was very gay. It was. That really was. That was. They like, had to yeah. break one of the swords before the fight to make the metaphor more obvious. Uh-huh. C- can we? Can we come? Like, can, can they come back? I would like to see the, oh their adventures God, of please. hanging out. Please let the giant ship full of of uh, seamen show up. <laughs> oh, it's their relationship. That's the A. 
I really like how we both went different ways with that. I thought you were just going to say ship as in relationship, and you just, no, not no, the semen. No. Which, yeah, it's what they are, because they're men <laughs> of the sea. Yep. Uh, but, yeah. So, anyway, any other miscellaneous thoughts or thoughts? Nope. Not off the top of the dome, at least. Nope. Off the top of the dome. And that rooster is just, like, <laughs> I'm going to start having, like, the thumbnail when I have our Digimon, like, Digimon Sonas, I guess, Digisonas. I'm just going to have to add just, like, the the rooster Daver, the electric <laughs> one, because, like, I don't know. It's 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 getting louder. Um, you got to give the Brady listeners a heads up, like, yeah, with the I thumbnail. I like the idea of the rooster yeah. Daver, actually. Yeah, I mean, I am, the, like, I am born in the year of the rooster, um, but yeah, I saw Brady looking up crossbows on Amazon, and I was just like, what oh are my. you doing? And he's just like, I'm going to get that rooster. And I was like, Brady, no! <laughs> but to be fair, he works from home, like, mm. like five days a That's week, fair, so but he's no. kind of sick of I the mean, rooster. I mean, I'm not going to pretend yeah, that he wouldn't. me moving in here is not going to be made a lot better by not hearing just random shouting outside my apartment when I'm trying to work That's from fair. home. So I, I get the, I I get the struggle. the would respond to a sonic egg. Maybe. Eh? A what? A little, like, thing you can press a button and it emits an, like, ultrasonic beep. Uh, my mom asked for one last Christmas to help train <laughs> our dog to stop not. barking. Oh. We're not going to I, I, rem- <laughs> I remember that story. Yeah. <laughs> we're, not going to, we're not getting into that on this one. I remember that from the Discord <laughs> server. Um, but now that we're done discussing the episode, let's move on to pondering Postmon Pat and predictions. So first up over to YouTube comments for Postmon Pat, we have Heavenbot, who, oh my god, I'm doing that voice again from last week. <laughs> I'm going to stop doing the voice, the the uh, I'm selling a house voice. Uh, so first up, we have, trying to get to my normal voice there, Heavenbot, who says, based in Red Pillmon is exactly what they thought of hearing me say Barstamon in the episode review. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know how you, I didn't realise... And they said they didn't realize I had a podcast, so if you're not watching sooner, well, welcome to the podcast. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, sometimes I talk about roosters for entirely too long, <laughs> but it is driving me insane. So anyway, they have thoughts. They say that they do like Espimon a lot, but the fake hero thing really hits them like a childhood in joke at this point, especially seeing Hero gloss over it every single time. The facial animations during the burying were probably part of the best expressions of horror in the entire season. Mm. The helplessness portrayed was intense. Jellymon's farming is probably showing her attempts at actually working instead of her trying to get rich quick. That's interesting. And they call that character development. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. During the... Yep. Sorry, I'm hoping on. that they're, they're doing something there. Like, she's... Jellymon has definitely felt like she has improved since that time that, like, she was just told that she just ruined everything. Some, but... Like, I... I mean, I guess, yeah. I hadn't really consciously been thinking of it, but it still struck me way more as a we need a convenient excuse to have lots of, what, celery and olives, wasn't it? <laughs> we couldn't just show up with yeah. catnip because we got some from the store, no. Yeah, no, we had... Well, uh, maybe they don't have that in Japan, who knows? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> uh, they, anyway, they say during the fight scene, specifically the screenshot that I used for the thumbnail, Lamont one looks monstrous, to say the least. They really had hoped that his Mega would keep the savage aspects, but it wouldn't be Digimon if the final form wasn't more human- humanoid than the rest, because his Mega, along with Jellymon's Mega, have been shown off. We're getting cards in next month's Psycho Jump, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, they say, fingers crossed for some hakuda cause drama next episode. And wow, good on you. That That was correct. We uh, we essentially did get that, perhaps. Next, we have M, who says they've been really feeling the effects of the Espimon situation lately, which really sucks because they say that they like his design. They were hoping that he would at least realise that Hero wasn't a fake by the end of the Octomon episode. Anyway, they're glad that everyone agrees that Bakaneko was a banger. And it certainly was. Uh, next, we have Mystic Digital saying that they are an Espimon fan, and that it's a good episode and a good podcast. And Narumi Mori says that the writers of the series are creative in some episodes, but they weren't really expecting that they would make the Digimon of the Week very high, hard to defeat. It was a crappy episode, and they just wished it had more time to show Bast- um, Bastemon changing her mind. And I, I feel like that's still like the ghost game problem of only having 20 minutes to mm-hmm. tell a story. Yeah. Uh, but they did a like, pretty good so job I can, this I week. I can forgive that. They thought. did, although I will oh, say yeah, they, that the first half could have been an entire 20 minutes, and it would have been pretty great. It could have, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
I'm I feel like this the episodes where they make them hit closer to home always seem to do better because they don't have to go out and investigate it if they're already thrown into the mon of the week. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So it's I'm kind of like it's I'm torn between like yes I like it when they do investigate and we do get to see the effects of the mon of the week but at the same time we don't have time to really explore that and have a satisfying ending. Uh-huh. Ne- next we have KG James who says that they got whiplash from some of the endings in the show going from burying people alive to maybe one day I'll have a human partner yeah, yeah. good point that yeah. was definitely like it yeah. yeah it's very it's very much a sharp turn even by the ghost game standards and then they say having said that they did enjoy the episode overall because it was out of its mind and they support that yeah they've been yeah. like with this week and last week they've been really like going just kind of crazy and children. big fan mm-hmm. of that yeah definitely and just some, some, we're doing creepy nightmares you know, and Air, you, kinks you I guess that they have to traumatize the children I'm not I, I think you meant the characters not you know the children yeah I, yeah. I, I meant like I meant the characters like we did in Digimon Survive. We 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 traumatize the characters' children, not like the the uh, the children who are watching. Please, I should have. It was like the is it the monkey's paw of just like I wish granted, but it's in a different way. Yeah. Like when you don't word your wishes super well and you mm-hmm. get something that's yep. Sli- the, the, AKA te- the jerk. Technically, what you asked for. <coughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we have Lazy Croconaw, who says the episode was good, the cats, and the Mon gives us some scary faces, and it was fun overall. Definitely agree. And then they say that episode 56 seems like it will be weird with the cleaning and the dolls. They're hoping it's fun. Was this week's episode fun? Because yes. it was it was yeah. good. We've established that. But, like, I enjoyed watching I, I think I had yeah. fun. It was a fun episode. Yeah, I enjoyed watching it. But I was still, like, slightly creeped out, and I can't really, like, there's fun, like, and then there's, like, I'm Pork enjoying it, but it's air. still, like, at I'm... At least it cringe. wasn't boring. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, at least it wasn't boring. I mean, that's usually what I say with bad episodes, but no, it definitely wasn't boring. I mean, so I guess like, it was okay, so I keep harping on about how Ava it is, but, like, that's, that's, it's relevant here, you know? I, I think it was fun, but it was also, like, weird and terrifying in yeah, ways. Yeah, so, like, emotions. Honestly, the Twelfth Angel episode is one of my favorites, because we, that's, like, the, I feel like the point where we go from the tonal shift of... Oh, wacky kids, uh, you know, <laughs> killing DDR big episode. aliens to, uh, oh, Shinji is all alone in another dimension and he is going to die. And he knows that. And so it's it's a fun yeah, they... sort of like, wow, that is terrifying sort of fun, you know? And that was this episode. Yeah, they go from like, you know, like thermal expansion, how embarrassing, to just like trauma. Like Evangelion definitely has like a shift of like going from, okay, this is a mod of the week to this is a trauma. Mm-hmm. Anyway... Uh, then we have Mudderwatt, who says they like that they use Bastemon as a horror villain and not just hot booby lady. And yeah, she was definitely, like, I guess to some, both. But yeah, mm. I'm I'm a big fan of when we have a horror villain who's just not, like, just there to be a hot booby lady. Yeah, that, that's yeah. a really good way of saying it. Next week, and God, I hope that she's a scary evil lady. Yeah, horrifying. Love it. I, I, I like when we do horror. Like, mm-hmm. but Same. We, we, can have a, we can have a little hot booby lady as a treat. Sure. Yeah. I just also want her to be terrifying. Ne- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next, we have user ZP, who says they love Bastemon in the episode. They also like the fight scene. It was good. They love the episode overall, five out of five. And they think that Espimon would look so much cuter if he had a nose. And uh, yeah, I'll it kind of looks like he has like a, a Walter White kind of like goatee going on. Actually, he <laughs> looks a lot like Walter White um, in, in general. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he definitely like, he needs a nose. Yeah. Next, we have user IU, who says that it would have, this episode would have been better, a 10 out of 10 episode, if uh, Bastemon ate Espimon. And they're wondering if, if we get a dub for Ghost Game, if Bastemon's going to say Nya still. And probably just Meow. Yeah. I don't know anymore. Or like, your oh, cat puns. Well known that I could see them just leaving it. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, like in uh, Adventure Try, how the English dub left in the Sundera reference, sure. which I'm still amazed about that. Like, wow, you really know that we're all weebs. Like, yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Toei. <laughs> and no, I want ca- I want cat puns. Like, how Tailmon would occasionally drop, like, the, the, the old, like, it sounds perfect kind of, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. kind of thing. Oh, yeah, I would expect so many cat puns. Mm-hmm. And probably at least one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, people say that, like, oh, the English dubs of Digimon are really cringe because they're full of these oh, dumb no, puns. I'm like, fun. they're terrible. No. 
<laughs> yeah, like, and also, I'm, 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 I'm often a, an English dub, like, enjoyer slash defender, because it just, it is just the demographic and also the time. Like, it would, the demographic was kids in the early 2000s. Yeah. And it was on the same, it was, like, if you watch some English dubs from the, back around that time, they are, some of them, really bad. Oh, yeah. No, uh, But was, Digimon, I felt. Digimon was better than average. It's still watchable today. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel like people who are, I, I mean, I don't want to be, like, uh, high and mighty, like, I grew up, so I'm, I know, I'm, I have a superior opinion because I was, I grew up then. But I feel like you kind of had to be there to really get, like, the, the, the true enjoyment of the time. Like if you were if you were born like if you weren't in twelve the, at the time, I can't it's believe that people to to get it. I think yeah. yeah. Speaking as yeah. someone or who has not or watched in my case, Digimon like until 10. I was in my late twenties, I can agree that you had to be there as a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it is mind boggling, by the way, that there are people who are born like after the year two thousand who are in their twenties. Like in my mind, those people are still ten. Yep. Yep. Like Time I is just wild. like people born in two thousand and three turn twenty next year, and I'm like, how is that possible? For I am also turning twenty next year, and then I realize, <laughs> oh no, Oops. oh no, it's I'm okay. ten years YouTube older than them. You're turning fourteen next year. <laughs> yeah, YouTube thinking that I'm a minor is like is is a compliment, but also really annoying. Like I'm. I still get like asked for ID when I buy alcohol. Sometimes I'm just like, I will, I will take that compliment. But uh, yeah. YouTube, stop disabling my comments, please. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not a minor, not, and the stuff I upload, I don't, I don't think is inappropriate. Uh, so, um, YouTube, leave me alone. I'm a soft boy, but be nice to me. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, do we have any thoughts about the series so far? Because I'm feeling pretty good about Ghost Game at the moment. Give me more of this. Yeah. And last week. Yeah. Last week and this week. Hey, I was oh, the only one who been. gave last week a five. That's I'll fair. agree, though, that give me more of last week, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, I still g- I gave the lowest score of the three, and I gave a four yep. last week. So I want more of this, and like, the, these past two weeks, uh, th- that is A+. plus. Mm-hmm. I'm a big, big fan of that. Yeah. Uh, th- I feel like this is what Ghost Game should be, and it, I feel like they used the 20-minute time limit fairly effectively this episode. Mm-hmm. And also, I love... Evolution debuts. I've always loved Evolution debuts, and it's always disappointing when they're kind of like meh, or just like, oh, okay, they, that happened, I guess. But this episode did it really well. Yeah. It was there a good was focus on on all the characters. Yeah. Anyway, so next week we have episode fifty-seven, Ghost Taxi. Um, I'm I think judging by the synopses that I've read from the episode guide listing, that it is a Christmas episode, and I am what they call in the business a crimbo himbo. So, (laughs) big fan of Christmas. Um, Yeah, I I just like Christmas. It's on either account. Mm -hmm. See, no, I, I I love any excuse to decorate. I love the food. I love how Australian Christmas is kind of, like, we can't make up our minds on what dessert to have, so we have all of them. Mm. We just we have literally every single Christmas dessert because we one it's really hot, so we have a bunch of them that are like no bake or just ones from the fridge. But then we also have the traditional ones because we are a, like white Australians tend to originate from the UK. Mm-hmm. So we have, like, Christmas pudding, which boggles my mind that the U.S. don't have Christmas pudding. And when you think of pudding, you think of, like, this moosey custody thing and not just, like, um, this gross mess of, like, fruit um, and I, raisins. I mean, I'm familiar and just, with, you put custard with that on it. version as well, but I think both of them are bad. Oh, yeah, yeah like, Christmas pudding is only, like, acceptable if, it, like, you, you just English cover it with custard. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Um... Th- they in like the English, and I can say this because I am like my background is English. Uh, they invaded the word the world for spices, uh-huh. and then ki- they <laughs> proceeded to not use any use of them. them. <laughs> yep, I was thinking. Yeah, the same and then thing. decided, and then decided that milk was too spicy for their tummies. But <laughs> on uh, the other hand, just... you can still get really good Indian takeout, is my understanding. Oh, absolutely! Yes, absolutely. How like absolutely uh, bizarre. Mm-hmm. But you know, yeah. Anyhow. Anyhow, so uh, do we have any predictions for Ghost Taxi? Because it's meant to be Christmas episode, but I didn't get any Christmas 
stuff from the preview, and I'm kind of like, yeah, but either. I need my Christmas. I'm a, the Crimbo Himbo. Oh, see, I'm really hoping that it's just not a Christmas episode. Yeah, I didn't get any Christmas vibes from it at all, but, I mean, you're the one who's read the synopses, so I'll take your word for it. To me, it just kind of struck me as, like, a, a what if self-driving cars, but evil. I mean, uh, you mean self-driving cars? Well, yeah, you know, taken to a bit more of an, of an extreme. Yeah, 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 exactly. Actively trying to it, hurt I mean, you as okay. opposed to not smart enough to know how to prevent hurting you. Okay, okay. Um, that's just, that's a Futurama episode. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they have like the the Christmas. Yeah. Not the uh, car. why did I say Christmas? I'm sorry. Also that. Yeah, the 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 wear car mm-hmm. episode, which yeah, I know, I it's it's a reference to yep. a movie. The but, honking. Um, the shining. We had to talk about Futurama. The, the honking. Uh, yeah, we had to talk about Futurama. The uh, you are you are approaching the scary door. <laughs> God, the scary door. That's so good. I, I think about the scary door, like, I want to say, like, three times a week. The other day, Quinn and I started I singing the uh, stuff from the Devil's Hands or Idle Play thing. <laughs> Just to start off our day. It was pretty great. That's Anyhow. That's a good way to start the day. Mm-hmm. Always start your day with with a Futurama reference. Anyway, um, any other predictions for Ghost Taxi? This seems interesting. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm tentatively here for it. I... I guess I can predict that I doubt it'll live up to this week's episode, which is a shame. But I mean, you know, it's this is a hard episode to top. Yeah, I, yeah. Which I mean, if they go to like almost near this episode, I'll be happy. But uh, yeah, I, I hope Lilith Mon eats I, I'm, Elon Musk for Christmas. I think everyone would delicious. Enjoy that. Yeah, including Elon Musk. Probably. I I, w- I would like that. Yes. Win win win. But uh, yes, win win win. All right, everyone, so thanks for listening to another episode, and I hope you enjoyed the random rooster in the background, which apparently is just getting louder and louder as as time progresses, so that's cool and fun. So you can join us next time for Digimon Ghost Game episode 57, Ghost Taxi. We get to find out if it's actually Christmas-themed or if it's just, like, Die Hard set on uh, around the Christmas Day area. Almost, uh, just p- Christmas period. There we are. Found the word eventually. I am the, Chris- the, the Crimbo Christmas Himbo. Park. So the link dumps in the description. Yeah, and and uh, you can contact us to stay updated. Leave, leave us a comment on this episode on YouTube. Join in the conversation. And for a full list of ways to find out about the podcast across the internet, head over to our link tree, which is linktr.ee slash lost in translation. So it's linktree slash lost in translation. If you enjoy the podcast or videos, you can show your support by signing up on Patreon and get some cool rewards and help us hit milestones. Thank you, Mr. Rooster. Thank you to our supporters on Patreon who are not roosters. I believe Stephen Reeves who is Wild and Sifor on Archive Our Own Kadawashi Chisai who can follow on Twitter at Chisai236 Niobu who says you should follow Chisai on Twitter at Chisai236 Lismet who is a Lekmon on Tumblr Nicholas Emery from Gone Will Hunting a Hunter Hunter Watch podcast Magnus Lucas Jason105 Patrick Jason Shelby Digital Hazard who is on Twitch at the Digital Hazard Alumnus Trobimon and Vimon Tamer you can also make a donation on our PayPal, which we found linked in the description. It's paypal.me slash edgemon. You can also donate to me on my coffee account, ko-fi.com slash edra. So thank you so much for listening to another podcast episode. Again, if if the rooster does show up in the recording, my apologies. If it doesn't because the noise reduction edited out, you just probably think that I'm absolutely crazy. And that, that's, I kind of hope that's probably true. probably accurate. Yeah. 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 Um, I do really like what Digimon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. No. no Uh, Anyway, so, Chloe, Quinn, thank you for joining me and for listening to The Rooster or my voice, whatever is more beautiful. Um, Anything that you're watching, enjoying lately that you would like to mention? We've just been keeping watching The Good Place. Yeah, a little bit. The Good Place is so good. I've been real busy lately, so I really haven't done anything new. I can say what I'm looking forward to, which is that in January, the second season of Birdie Wing is coming out. As is the uh, 10th volume of Adachi Toshi Mamora, translated into English. It's going to be a good time to be a lesbian. It's a good time for Yuri, baby. That's cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm watching this trashy uh, <laughs> Netflix uh, reality show that oh. has a new season because I'm the worst person in the world. It's called Too Hot to Handle. Uh, oh, really I think bad. I watched some of just... that with my roommate. Yeah, it was really bad. It is, if it's what it I'm is thinking awful. It is. Um, but I can't, I, I, there's a new series and I just can't stop watching these horrible, horrible people. And why is the Australian always the worst? <laughs> they always have an Australian on and they're always just significantly the worst person there. They're, they just are like the worst type of Australian 
himbo that just is like I just it, it's just the worst and it has nothing going on in the brain um but that's the like I, I'm I'm the worst person for enjoying it but I just can't stop it's a problem uh, anyway so of course thank you all for listening thanks to Quinn and Chloe for joining me and we'll see you on the next one bye bye, bye. bye.